project. The meeting was attended by Minister of Internal Trade and Industry Tariq Kabil and the Russia's ambassador to Cairo. Kabil stated that President El Sisi gave directors to start implementing the Russian projects, which were agreed during his meeting with the Russian delegation. Kabil added that the President's meeting discussed bilateral trade, industry and aviation files in addition to the implementation of Russian industry zone. So first, uh, let's uh, tackle uh, the significance of uh, this meeting and uh, cooperation between Egypt and Russia at this stage. Um, definitely, this is a very uh, important step into increasing foreign yes. investments in Egypt. Nevertheless, I, I'm not sure if, uh, if industrial zones, specific industrial zones yes. to specific countries is, is the ideal solution for Egypt because we cannot have, for example, 40 or 50 different industrial zones, a German industrial zone, an mm. American industrial zone, a Russian industrial zone. I think it's, it's much have, have mm. normal industrial zones where all the different countries participate in because actually the bigger the industrial zone is, the more investors and the more companies I can attract to. For example, um, if I want to attract companies from different sectors, from the yes. pharmaceutical sector, for example, or from the automotive sector, I need to have them all in one in, in one place or in, at one location mm -hmm. or at least at a close location. So um, um, if they are very far away from each other, let's say, for example, we have uh, a, a Russian zone mm -hmm. at the Suez Canal corridor and then we have um, um, uh, a German or a French industrial zone at 6th of October city yes. or maybe in Asyut or something, this will definitely not be very um, helpful. I think it's very important that all the feeding companies would be located in one part. And, and, and this will definitely make it much, much easier um, for the investors um, to find yes. um, the suppliers uh, for their products. So mm -hmm. this is one very important step. The most important step is that we don't want to attract foreign investors to invest in Egypt for providing the local market uh, with their products. No, we want to export. So I hope that with, with all the, uh, the upcoming negotiations with all the different uh, countries and, 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 uh, and companies, um, that they focus on establishing uh, huge factories for exporting the products so that uh, the brand made in Egypt would be exported all over the place. But most of the investors, they want to come in order to make use out of the 90 million people or 95 million people living in Egypt, you know. So, and this is definitely not that helpful for the um, 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 for the Egyptian economy as much as if we would import uh, export all these products as well. Okay. And then uh, moving uh, to Akbar Ilyum uh, newspaper where we read Prime Minister Engineer Sharif Ismail witnessed the signing of an agreement between Egypt and Russia to create a Russian industrial zone in Egypt. The signing ceremony was attended by Minister of Trade and Industry Tariq Kabil and his Russian counterpart Denis Manturov. It is scheduled to be on an area of 2 million meters in East Bursaid. However, the city will manufacture agricultural tractors, petrochemicals products and other products. So now um, the, we have here the products that uh, will be manufactured, like agricultural tractors and petrochemicals. So um, what's your take on this? Well, um, of course, we, we need all these uh, products, especially the agriculture uh, machines are yes. very important because actually we have uh, lots of potential um, for uh, industrial, uh, for agriculture products, mm. and we're not making really the best use out of it. There are only a very few um, exporters of, uh, of agriculture products. Mm. I think we should increase that um, uh, by at least 10 yes. times, if not even more than that. And uh, like I said before, of course, it's very important to attract the foreign investors, um, but at the at the same time, we need to have um, different uh, uh, investors from different sectors mm -hmm. in one industrial zone. And I think it's, it's going to be much, much better if we would have um, um, huge industrial zones. Maybe we can make inside an industrial zone, mm -hmm. for example, a Russian sector, for example, a French sector, uh, yes. a German sector. A big, a big industrial zone exactly. with many countries. Exactly. So oh. I, I think this will make much more sense because actually, if I'm not mistaken, we, we have been signing agreements for foreign industrial uh, zones over the past 20 or 30 years, and I'm not really sure if they have been that successful. So I think we, need, we should maybe um, change the strategy a little yes. bit and, 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 and really try to, to find what we need for, for, for the Egyptian economy inside the Egyptian economy and also mm -hmm. what we want to do, uh, what we need in order to export these products much more um, to the um, international key markets, of course. Okay.
And they're moving uh, to Sadal Balad uh, newspaper and we read the following headline. Uh, sources in the parliament confirmed that President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi is scheduled to deliver a speech before the parliament on the 11th of February. The sources told Sadal Balad that the prime minister will also deliver his speech before the parliament late on February. So uh, talking about the parliament, uh, how do you evaluate the performance of uh, the parliament still now and uh, what do you expect should be tackled in the present address to this parliament? Um, well, the performance of the, um, of the parliament has been quite entertaining so far, mm. to, to say the least. Um, yes. We have been, unfortunately they cut off the, um, uh, the, the broadcast signal for a couple of, of sessions, yes. which I think wa was, was a little bit um, unfortunate because I think the Egyptian viewer and the Egyptian uh, citizen would have been very interested uh, to follow yes. that, but nevertheless, I think I think they have been um, uh, the the airing has been rescheduled um, for all these sessions yes. uh, now. Um, after the um, President Abdel Fattah Sisi did one or two um, 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 speech uh, uh, phone calls actually uh, during uh, two talk shows, if I'm not mistaken, yes. during the past couple of days. I think the, the message was very clear. There were, th there were uh, some things which he was not very happy about, and it was also a message to the government, like, I want you to tackle th these issues I'm, I'm talking about right now. Mm -hmm. And I think he, he, will be, he will be delivering a very uh, strong message, yes. um, and he will be very critical to... He, he already criticized mm -hmm. the, uh, the parliament in, in one of his uh, phone calls to, I think, to Mr. Osama Kamel in yes. his show, if I'm not mistaken. And I think he will be also tackling this issue again in front of the parliament because mm -hmm. he, he is not really happy with, with, uh, with the performance so far. Mm -hmm. And I think also the Egyptian voters ha have not been very um, happy with that. Um, so I think it's going to be a very important speech. Yes. And the most important thing, it's going to show to the government where the uh, president puts his focus during the next couple uh, of months. Yes. And, and I think this will be a very, very strong message. And they're moving to Al Ahram online a newspaper, and we read the Egyptian Trade Minister Tariq Kabil said that Russia and Egypt are planning to negotiate over the delivery of helicopters to equip the Mistral aircraft carriers Egypt boat from France. The Kremlin had announced in October that it would sell Egypt helicopters and other equipment worth over $1 billion to outfit the two Mistral carriers Egypt received as part of a deal with France earlier the same month. The ca aircraft carriers were initially built to be sold to Russia. Well, the deal was terminated by France over the Ukraine crisis. The carriers are expected to arrive in the summer of this year. So how do you evaluate also Egyptian-Russian military cooperation at uh, this stage? I think it's very important. Yes. Um, we'll definitely need these helicopters hmm. um, for increasing the stability and safety in many yes. parts of Egypt. And in fighting um, and combating terrorism. If, yes. Exactly, exactly. Because, because, of course, if you want to ca combat um, and, and get rid of all these terrorist um, groups, all in, especially yes. on the Sinai. I think um, military helicopters are definitely um, the most effective and, and the most um, secure way um, to do that. And, and of course, they're much um, uh, much more um, uh, practical than, than, for example, the fighter jets, for example. Yes. So um, showing that um, um, Russia is, is increasing its its cooperation with Egypt in that field mm. also shows again um, um, the weight of um, uh, of Egypt um, yes. in, in stabilizing um, the, 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 the the situation in the whole Middle East region, especially mm. with the crisis we have in Syria, where uh, Russia is of course uh, very much engaged these days. Um, I think it's even more important to stabilize the, the safety um, and the security in Egypt yes. as, as this will spread around to the other countries uh, around Egypt as well. And they're moving to Egypt Independent, and we read the Magdi Abdelaziz, uh, head of the Egyptian Customs Authority, said that President Fatah Sisi's decision to order an increase on the prices of some imported goods is very important. Abdelaziz said that decision on raising prices seeks to protect the national product. Abdelaziz added that it is guaranteed. 
that uh, there are guarantees the fulfillment of Egypt's international commitments. Egypt has raised tariffs rates on a wide range of imports. The latest efforts by authorities to curb dollar spending on imports as the country struggles through a currency crisis. So how do you read these statements? I think this, um, um, I, I completely agree with this step. I have no problems in increasing the customs at all. But um, the problem is we also need to increase the quality of the local products. It's, um, we should not protect a, a local industry if the quality of these products are not good enough. So, so what is more important, we need to have um, specifications for, for any product sold um, to the consumer in Egypt. Um, if it is a locally produced product or if it's mm. an <clears throat> imported product, we need to have specifications for everything. Um, we need to um, get rid of the low quality and, and low budget products which we are importing with billions uh, from, from China, for example. Um, I've heard um, one of the gentlemen representing the, cha the, the, the chamber of the um, importers um, that he, he, he did not agree to, um, to the new um, um, law, um, which, uh, or to, the, to the new um, deg uh, degree which, which the Minister of Foreign Trade asked for that. Yeah. All the products coming to Egypt should be tested and should have a, yes. quality, um, a quality certificate before they enter Egypt. Yeah. And uh, I do not understand why he, he's not agreeing to that. And, and probably because he knows that 99% yes. of the products we're importing from China um, are of very low quality. And I think we should increase um, and should change the attitude towards a um, quality-oriented consumer instead of a price-oriented consumer. I personally, I will not, sh uh, under no circumstances, will I buy uh, a locally, a local product, um, locally uh, produced product if it's of a, uh, if it's of a low quality, mm -hmm. and if I have an imported um, product in front of me, even if it's twice as expensive, but at least I have something quality yes. and, and some, something safe, especially when it comes um, to safety related uh, things like like electric appliances for example yeah. um, because if you buy a low product this could cause you a fire at your house for example it could burn down your your apartment and it could kill your yeah. family members so so I think it's very important that we focus on quality right. things and and, and complete, especially yes. And, and in many other important things, like for example, the automotive sector, we, we have been, the last week, uh, I think uh, we lost 40 innocent lives on the Egyptian roads yeah. because um, of, the, um, uh, of the weather conditions. Nevertheless, if those cars, for example, were of good quality, had airbags, had seat belts, mm. um, for example, or had the electronic stability program, I'm sure that uh, we would have saved at least 80 or 90% yes. of those lives we lost. So I think it's very important. Mm. Uh, we raised this issue as well because um, um, at the end of the day we want to attract investors. So, so the environment has to be safe in all aspects. In, in when, when, you, when, when an investor, for example, wants to rent an apartment, he has to make sure that all the um, electric parts, for example, in mm. his apartment are of good quality, for mm. example. The air quality has to be improved. The road safety, the road safety situation has to be improved. And, and I think this is, this is very important. I was asked um, um, this week um, on Radio Master, uh, what should we do to, to for example, to increase um, um, the road safety in Egypt. Mm. It's, very, it's, very, it's very easy. We're not going to invent the wheel for, um, again. We have to, to cooperate with countries, for example, like Germany, for example, to find a solution. They have been able to reduce um, the number of road fatalities significantly over the past 30, 40 years. Um, last year, they reached um, a, a low of uh, um, a 20 years low, actually, of I think only 3,000 um, um, uh, fatalities on the roads. In comparison, we have um, approximately around 15,000 or, or 16,000, depending on the numbers, um, on the sources we get the numbers from. Yes. And, and taking into consideration that they have 50 million cars registered on the roads and we have only 5 million cars registered on our roads. This shows you um, um, the gap between the road safety situation we have here and the road safety situation we have um, in the international um, uh, markets or on the international, on the other countries. So I think it's very important that, for example, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Mr. Sam Ashoki, will invite, for example, the German ambassador for a coffee mm -hmm. and, and ask him what did Germany do to, to reduce the number of, of, um, of fatalities on the roads? Yeah. And it should be a cooperation between the two countries. Yes. I think President Sisi could, could meet with Angela Merkel in order really to sign an agreement about how to, um, to reduce, how to improve the road safety situation in Egypt and not a, an agreement between two ministries. I think it yeah. has to be uh, on a much higher level than that. Okay, uh, and um, 
Moving to Al Wafd newspaper, and we read Egypt's stocks rebounded on Tuesday amid Arab investors' purchases, driving up the market's main index, EGX 30, 1.73 percent to just 6,009 points. Arab investors ended the session as the only net buyers to the tune of 51.8 million dollars pounds out of 156 stocks listed for the day. 95 so gains and 31 declined. Daily, turno daily turnover reached some 471 million pounds. Broad index AGX 70 shed 0.9 percent. Now we'll have a report about uh, the performance of uh, the stock market. So stay tuned. The Egyptian pound held steady against the dollar at an official foreign currency auction on Tuesday, but strengthened on the black market. Egypt, which depends on imports for its food and energy, is facing a foreign currency crisis and authorities are under increasing pressure to devalue the pound. But the central bank surprised markets when it strengthened the pounds by 20 piastres in November and has held it steady ever since. The central bank sold 39.4 million US dollars at a cutoff price of 7.73 pounds to the dollar on Tuesday, unchanged from the previous auction. The official rate is still far stronger than the black market rate, which strengthened to around 8.74 pounds per dollar from 8.75 pounds on Thursday. To help relieve a dollar shortage that has been imports of essential goods piling up at ports, the central bank on Tuesday raised the cap on foreign currency deposits at banks 5 to 450,000 US dollars. The cap implemented a year ago with a 50,000 US dollars limit aimed to counter the black market for dollars. Welcome back. And now we move to Al Aram newspaper and we read the Egyptian pound held steady against the dollar at an official foreign currency auction on Tuesday, but strengthened on the black market. The central bank sold $39.4 million at a cutoff price of 7.7 301 pounds to the dollar on Tuesday, unchanged from the previous auction. The official rate is still far stronger than the black market rate, which strengthened to around 8.74 pounds per dollar from 8.75 pounds on Thursday. So, sir, how do you evaluate the government's efforts to stabilize the pound against the dollar? Well, I, I think they're, they're trying to do a lot to stabilize um, uh, yes. the Egyptian pound against the dollar. Nevertheless, the problem is that um, lots of the um, importers and lots of the businessmen in Egypt are really actually uh, mm. profiting from this so-called dollar crisis um, mm. by increasing, for example, the prices of the product, products by, yes. by let, let's say, if the, uh, if the dollar um, exchange rate is 10%, they increase the, the prices by 20%, yes. so they even make a 10% additional profit margin. And um, if you um, go for example, a very simple vegetable uh, vendor who, who, who's getting his, his vegetables um, from a field in, in, in the Nile Delta from Mansoura or from Port Said or from yes. wherever, um, he tells you, well, the, the dollar price, the dollar exchange it has, when you ask him why he, he raises prices, he, he tells you, well, uh, the dollar Dollars. exchange it has raised. Uh, yes. I mean, he, it has nothing to do with the dollar actually in that case. So, so I think, I think the, the government is doing um, uh, lots of efforts. But nevertheless, I think we need, they need to have some experts um, um, who are inside the market so that they can know how, how some of the businessmen and some of the importers are actually manipulating yes. um, the prices. And I think this is very important because there are lots, lots of um, things going behind the curtains and, and, and we really need a market insider to know how, how the, um, um, some, some of these greedy dealers, um, um, uh, businessmen, are manip trying to manipulate the dollar in order to profit for it yes. um, uh, for themselves. Okay, Mr. Mohamed Shetami, the expert, uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. And now, dear viewers, uh, go for a short break and uh, we'll resume the breakfast show, so stay tuned.
Palestinian engineers Ibrahim Barghit and Zayed Saned have come up with an invention they say will make it easier for people to change a flat tire. Their hydraulic carjack is a device that can be fitted to a vehicle and controlled remotely. Drivers can press a key inside the car and select which tire is flat to lift the vehicle. An electric screwdriver designed by the young engineers can then be First year engineer student at the Palestinian Polytechnic University, Barahit has one who has come up with the idea. He started working on the system in 2013 and won the sixth place at the Innovators competition before teaming up with Sanat who helped him develop the electric screwdriver that works with air pressure. The pair spent $2,000 on the system, which took them more than two years to finalize. Co-inventor Sanat said they had their share of challenges. They both hope to build their new own company and have their hydraulic system become part of all most models and makes of cars. Nine a.m. here in Cairo. Welcome to the top stories of this hour. President Abdel Fattah Sisi met with Prime Minister Sharif Ismail on Tuesday to review the overall political and economic developments, notably procedures taken to control prices and guarantee safety of means of transportation. Following the meeting, presidential spokesman Alaa Youssef said the Prime Minister informed the President about the progress made regarding supplying people with their energy and food needs. President El Sisi gave directives to activate the monitoring process of food and medical prices to guarantee offering citizens the best commodities at affordable prices. He stressed the significance of continuing price control, adding that the President and the Prime Minister probed developments regarding the latest trade crash of Al Ayat and the government's procedures to develop the railway authority. President Abdel Fattah Sisi on Tuesday stressed on the importance of boosting trade relations between Egypt and Russia. Sisi made the statement during his meeting with the Russian Minister of Trade and Industry, Denis Matarov, which was attended by the Minister of Trade and Industry, Tarek Kabil. Egypt and Russia signed three cooperation agreements at the end of the Egyptian-Russian Joint Committee meeting, which started on Monday. The agreements included a protocol on establishing a Russian industrial zone east of Port Said, where two million square meters were allocated for the project. Another agreement was signed between the Russian Fund for Direct Investment and a number of Egyptians Egyptian banks to create a mechanism to fund the Russian project in the Russian zone in Egypt. The third agreement covered on the outcome of the Egyptian-Russian Joint Committee. In an exclusive interview with Nal TV, Staghrid Hussein, Minister of Trade and Industry, Tarek Kabil described the Egyptian-Russian relations as strategic, saying that they set an example for the economic cooperation based on achieving mutual interests. Excellency, starting off with the, the joint cooperation with Russia, well, it has started and it flourishes. And after also meetings between both presidents, President Abdel Fattah Sisi and the Russian President Putin, we find a leap forward. Today we are garnering the fruit. So let me talk more about the outcome of the committee meetings and how far are we going to translate what has been achieved into action on the ground? I mean, if you look at the relationship, it has... I mean, first of all, I mean, Egyptian-Russian relationship is, is quite historical. So it started from supporting Egypt into building the high dam all the way up to building the nuclear station for power generation. So it's a very long-standing uh, relationship. Um, uh, we met 
with the uh, Minister of Industry and Trade for Russia as well as the uh, uh, UAE side in a joint committee in Abu Dhabi uh, in which we have talked the uh, idea of the uh, Russian industrial area. Mm -hmm. That was the beginning. Mm -hmm. Throughout the last month, we've been in discussion and in preparation for that particular meeting. We've got the uh, um, uh, major talks in the last couple of weeks. Tomorrow we have the ministerial uh, negotiation at the end. So we're expecting to sign something on the uh, uh, for the uh, industrial area. Uh, we've identified the locations and we will be in discussion in terms of what type of projects mm -hmm. will be uh, built into that area. However, the negotiation also will open, will be uh, wide open to talk about agriculture areas, mm -hmm. um, uh, different type of industry outside the uh, Russian areas, uh, and uh, even including uh, um, airlines uh, agreements. Also in an exclusive interview with Nal TV's Tarit Hussain, the Russian Minister of Trade and Industry, Denis Matarov, said that Egypt is due to receive more than six planes. He held on the strong Egyptian-Russian relations, adding that the Russian business sector will pump more investment to the Egyptian market. That's a real hit, Excellency, you know. We've been like waiting for uh, such a step and looking forward to, to it's been implemented on solid grounds. Tell us more about the features of this important project and uh, definitely there are well, short term the industrial, the zone. industrial yeah. zone yeah. and short term goals for it and long term goals as well yeah. um, last year we received uh, the proposal from the egyptian side to mm -hmm. uh, to choose from uh, several places which was uh, shown to us and we uh, we chosen two uh, industrial zones near Alexandria and uh, Port Said, the yeah. second one. And I think it's the uh, uh, best choice uh, which could be uh, for our industrial companies who are interested in the, um, placing their uh, manufacturing facilities mm -hmm. in uh, the industrial sector which I mentioned to you already in your first questions i mean it could be machinery yeah. different sectors of machinery mm -hmm. and uh, of course especially for uh, the building of the the uh, nuclear nuclear the energy dollar. plant yeah. uh, other factories uh, could use this facility to, to produce some sort of equipment which will be needed uh, to be placed there so, as I mentioned, it will be uh, the synergy. Uh, I cannot tell that it will be very quick and very fast because it takes uh, certain procedures uh, to implement the law um, which uh, should be uh, uh, implemented in Egypt to receive certain um, benefits for industrial zone as a free trade zone so we're discussing about details mm -hmm. of this matters and i hope that we will mm -hmm. find the right solution which will give the benefit and attract and encourage our companies to to come uh, to egypt with investments right it could be direct investments mm -hmm. uh, it could be joint investments with the egyptian companies mm -hmm. and we are um, also using uh, sources from the Middle East partners from Arab Emirates, from, uh, from Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. country uh, to, uh, to use it as a source of additional investment uh, support for the joint projects which are in the pipeline now, now in discussion. That brings us to the end of our top stories for now. Thank you very much for watching.